well there. No, you would not. It would not be pretty. Well, Jake, I think that's the whole point of prison, but we're not going to end up there. Skinny boys don't do well incarcerated. Look, this is an opportunity that we are not going to get again. I've been watching the first season of Oz, and there's this guy, a regular type of Joe, who happens to find himself behind bars, and he gets beat up by these Nazis. What? Yeah, <laughs> and, and these neo-Nazis, they beat him up and it's just submit to being a bitch for them, and it's not worth it. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm talking incarceration, ritualistic beatings and rapes at the hands of neo-Nazis. Well, trust me, you're too smart to get caught, okay? Why do we have to do this tonight? Look, I told you, the movie phone system crashed and now everyone, everyone has to pay in cash. So this is a half-assed plan? No. Look, there's twice the money that's here on a regular night. But this isn't a regular night. Exactly, because we're the only theater in this entire country playing this moronic film. I can't believe people are here to see this shit. <laughs> there's a line around the block, and each and every one of them means one thing. ka -ching. Another 9.50. Did you see those people camping outside for tickets? You know that's all bullshit. The studio did that. Really? You bet. They gave people the tents and everything. Oh. Anyways, we've talked and went over this plan for weeks. That's all I thought it was. I just thought we were talking. Just conversation. Discourse. Chit chat. Yeah, an exercise on semantics. Exactly. I just thought we were talking and yapping to help pass the time here in hell. No, Jake, my boy. This is the real thing. I was going to do this sooner than later. And this is sooner. Exactly. I've never seen it this full. Look, go time will be just after they pick up all the cash from the 10 p.m. shows. That's 15 minutes from now. Can you imagine? More than half of these imbeciles are here thinking they're seeing an actual documentary. Does it make any sense that three student film twits would go out into the woods and disappear? And you know, probably gutted and hacked up by some of the mountain men left over in deliverance. And then the families would turn around and let someone make a film with the discovered footage. Oh, look at them. Goddamn cattle! I mean, some people, most people are so stupid, I have no idea how they're able to get through the day without getting themselves killed. Hmm. You know these guidos from Perth Amboy offered me a hundred bucks to let them in the back door. How'd you know they're from Perth Amboy? They oh. said, look honey, we've come all the way from Perth Amboy. All the way. Like it's a monumental feat to get here from fucking Jersey. <laughs> I'm always so impressed when people state so proudly they're from a place like Perth Amboy. <laughs> so, you yeah, took the scene out and you let them in, right? <laughs> Fuck them. I can be bought that easily. No, let those misogynist cologne bathing fuckers stand in line with the rest of them. Oh, then of course I went from being called honey to them calling me a dumb bitch and I should go fuck myself. Yeah, you know, same thing. Last week some guy said to me, Hey, Willie Loman, can I get some help over here? Oh. Did the manager throw his ass out? Fuck no! You know, Teddy with his bad eye, you know, he, and his good eyes claims he didn't see anything, and that Skibble, you know, what's his face, was too busy trying to get out of the high school kid Layla. And how does that make you feel? Like shit! It's an insult that doesn't even make any sense! You know, it just goes to show you that the person who said it is complete. Willie Loman saw Loman's underwear. I sell cappy mocha, cappuccinos, biscotti. Granted, I did graduate with honors from Cal Berkeley, but now I have to face myself to the likes of this ignorant skunk. <laughs> you think that's bad? <laughs> no, no, it's disgusting that at least once a shift, when uh, when I'm behind the register, when Teddy happens to squeeze around me, that he just happens to have a hard on. No, but I also have to deal with the fact that my manager, my boss, the little sex fiend freak is also an imbecile who doesn't understand the meaning of the word competent. Yeah. No, I said, I said, Peter is a very competent worker in the cafe. Teddy tells me that I shouldn't say bad things about the people I work with. <laughs> now, I, I'm certain he didn't hear me correctly. I mean, no one can be this stupid. So I say, I didn't insult Peter. I think he's competent. The Teddy genius that he is gives me this obtuse look. But I don't know, maybe they never covered competent in the 8th grade on the Lower East Side. How the hell did my life end up here? Jake, I had a full scholarship to Columbia. You really think this is where I saw my life ending up? Glories of a higher education. That's what I told myself. You know, I really should have just learned something with, like, a, a tool belt and keys. Or like those guys with the pipes. Pipes? Yeah, pipes. Those guys you call when you have problems with your toilet. <laughs> 
You mean a plumber? Yeah, a plumber, you know, anything. Jesus, a hard hat or something, you know. I used to have such respect for the public before I actually started working here. And now? And now, now I have very vivid fantasies about putting arsenic in the espresso of some vile asshole and watching him die an excruciating and painful death. Oh, sir, here you go. Sorry for the delay, sir. Hopefully this one's made properly. Oh, sir, are you all right? Do you need some water? Oh, no, you're choking on your intestine. Oh, it's just it's funny because two minutes ago you thought your shit didn't stink and you're taking your silicone and Botox girlfriend to see some pretentious piece of shit movie, excuse me, film by one of those Danish dog on 95 assholes and maybe you thought that, oh, you call me an idiot, implied that I didn't know how to make a cappuccino. Maybe you thought some Mickey Mouse tough guy bullshit would impress your girlfriend and make her forget about your bad hair plugs and your small dick. But regardless, you're choking on your intestine. Now, don't you wish you were just a little bit more civil and nicer to this idiot? Yeah. <laughs> Jake. That's just... Yeah. Yeah, but you know what, Jake? You know, you know what my fantasies are? What? To rob this shithole for every cent I can get. God, I hate this place. That's it, Jake. Focus on your hate, on your anger. Focus on how you'd like to get back at these fuckers. And the money. Jake, think of the money, Jake, the money. Cold, hard cash, tax-free American greenbacks. I would just love to pay back student loans. And credit card debt? And rents? You know, I've been working like a slave all summer, and you know, I'm only a month and a half behind now, but I'm making real progress. Well, have you had any time to write while you've been totally leaning away like some medieval serf? Liz, why do we have to do this tonight? Because I can see what the next ten years will be if I don't. Is it really that bad? Yes. Yes, it is. Well, I can stay here and have Teddy sexually assault me once a shift. What? Waitressing? Bartending? What fucking difference does it make if I'm serving someone a cappuccino, a scotch, or a chicken marsal? It's all the same ass shaking. Can I help you here? <clears throat> and can I get you anything else? Bullshit! I mean, there's only so many times a person can say that in their lifetime, and I reached my limit a long time ago. Yeah, but if you. What? Office work? Watch the clock wind down every day? Have the lifeblood drained out of me one boring eternal second at a time? Jake, if you know anything about me at all, you know that I would rather murder myself than have the highlight of my life be karaoke with the girls from the office each week. Yeah, if I get my sleep, so be it. If I get gunned down in the garage of police bullets, then that's the way my life is meant to go. One way or another, we are just pawns in the fickle hands of fate. Wow. Hmm. Uh, notions of fate and destiny are the preoccupations of men involved in rash undertakings. Yes! <laughs> exactly! Who said it? Kierkegaard? Maybe, I don't know. I saw it written on the bathroom stall at the KGB bar to one of my poetry readings. I knew those things weren't a complete waste of time. Yeah, but it also said things like free John Gotti or for a swell room job, call the Pacific Bar and ask for Alex. You know, I I'm not going to base my life, liberty, or whatever it is based on a commode. Granted, a very literate commode, oh. but nonetheless still a shitter. Oh, Jesus, Jake, look at the time. Look, we've got to go soon. Night tonight, I have to do this. I have a much better chance of getting away with it if you come with Look, no more of your candy ass bullshit. Are you in or are you out? Fuck it, let's, let's do it! Ah! The crap! Jake, I promise you will not regret this. Even if it turns to shit, you know? Like, a lot of guys do their best work in the big house. You know, they have like a, like a world renowned writing program or something, you know, or Sing Sing, or is it Otis Bill? Alright, we've got about five minutes. These are going to be our masks. Did you make these? No. Felicity did. They're from a show last spring. You told her you took them? No! No, no. God, they're a storage bin that we share. Before she notices they're missing, I will have them back. Don't you think they're just a little much? <laughs> yes. I specifically picked the most outlandish ones in order to scare the living shit out of them. 
Yeah, 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 you know, maybe they'll think they're being robbed by a bunch of artsy-fartsy lunatics wearing medicine masks. It'll, it'll really cut down on the hero factor. Hero factor? What is that? <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. It's something I heard in Pulp Fiction, you know, a movie with uh, Tim Roth and the Honey Bunny Chick. Yeah, yeah, I think that's great. Now focus! Focus, yes. Alright, three minutes to go. Let's run through the plan one more time. You are a unique child of the earth. You are Kojak with the swell head of hair. You're, you are Sam Spade. Um, Jake, those are successful cops and private dicks. You might want to try channeling some dice on the other side of the wall. Um, you're John Dillinger. You're Crazy Legs Nelson with fucking Bonnie! And Clyde! Yes! Now when you're doing the deed, what language do we speak? Uh, Spanyol. See, and if we speak to each other, what are our names? Uh, Quando es Francisco, y tu nombre bonita. Right. Now we have two minutes from the time of holy fire alarm. We've got to be on the same page. Absolutely. Okay. Two minutes to go. We have time to run through rehearsal one more time, top to bottom. Okay. Mask on, gloves on. I pull the alarm. Then we run up the back stairs and we draw guys. No, handcuffs. Everyone there. The assistant managers, the projectionists, any delivery guys, the coochie mamas, everyone except. Except the house manager. We have him open up the safe. And we have that fucker put the money in the bag. And then we have him grab the tapes out of the security camera. Then we handcuff him. And then we run down the back stairs to the street. Right, right. We've got to be out of there in 90 seconds tops. Or the cops are show up. Right. And we take off our masks and gloves once we get past Mercer Street. The darker side of the Street. Where no one can see us. And then we hide the loot at the construction site near NYU. Right, then we come back to work. Where there's chaos. Confusion. Bedlam. And we might get questioned by the police. Where were you? Where was I? I was at Milano's having a drink during my break. Where were you? Where was I? I was with Liz at Milano's having a drink and you know, talking about my troubles. Oh yeah, I can prove it. Yeah, just ask a grand or a Milano Mike. You know, they'll for sure know that we were there. We had a drink there an hour ago. But they might not be able to verify a win, though. Oh, they're so bombed by this hour of the night. They don't know what from down, and they don't know what time we came or left. But they'll know we were there. Oh, a little bit of flooding goes a long way. And then we go back to the church at 7 a.m. Which is closed all weekend. And we get the loop. I'll get the loop. We're really going to do this, aren't we? Looks that way. Okay. Alright. Once I pull the alarm, that's it. I'm turning back. Good luck. Me too. Here we go.